Hi everyone, this is Matt Bentley Walls um, doing another vlog, this time um, on the Leica M10. Now, anyone that's seen previous vlogs knows that um, I'm ostensibly a film shooter. Um, I love film, um, the latitude of film, and all of its characteristics. But I also, as I've said previously, shoot with a digital camera, the Leica M10. Um, and hey, look, we've all seen M10 vlogs, numerous, but this is a vlog based on the fact that I've had the camera for a couple of years now, and previous vlogs have, you know, they're excellent, most of the ones I've seen, but, um, they sort of deal with, well, I've had the camera for a couple of days, Leica very kindly lent me the camera, or an unboxing, or, or or dealing with the technical aspects of the camera. This is coming at it from a slightly different angle, in the sense that because I've had it for a while, I want to sort of get under the skin of the camera and report and discuss really the the soul of the camera what Leica are trying to achieve with this camera now the MP sorry the MP the the um the M10P has come out and yeah this is a 24 megapixel camera as opposed to the sort of slightly revamped touchscreen slightly different sounding shutter quieter sounding shutter at 40 megapixels camera this is the sort of this is the original M10. Uh, this is the camera. I should point out this is the um, 2.5 Sumerit lens on the front, so you have a yeah an idea of proportions and what have you. Um, lovely small little lens, um, and works very beautifully on the M10. Um, as do as do all Leica lenses with their varying characteristics. Um, this is untaped. I normally have the red dot taped up. In fact, I'll put that back on because I just sort of moved it off, so you could see that it it does have the the red spot. If that's interesting remotely, but that's it. That's how I normally that's how I normally carry it, and it's presently sporting the artisan and artist um, silk strap. This is the longer one. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but um, I'm never. I think it's the. Th Don't quote me on this, but I think it's the three o six. It's the slightly longer. I believe one hundred and twenty centimeters, which is the slightly longer three o six n. I think it is. Um, it's the slightly longer one because I like to go diagonal when I'm out shooting, um, which just, you know, extra length gives me a little bit more. Uh, um, really beautiful hand-woven silk strap. Very, very, very strong. Lovely leather. Anyway, I'm not talking about straps. Um, <laughs> just so you know what it is and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, this is this is about as I say the character, the personality of this camera, what I think Leica are trying to achieve with it, whether they've succeeded, um, and what it's about. Um, we're going what M nine, M two forty, M ten, and the various models after that, um, sort of ostensibly M tens, but M ten P and. Um, but this is kind of their, not their current line, but the M10 is the current line with, you know, the variations with the the, the P models and what have you. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is split this up into three sections, talk about how the camera varies, um, the, the new things on it, which have been reported, but I'll, I'll, 
I'll go over those just slightly. I'm not going to wax lyrical about them because I think they're fairly well documented by now. Um, but I'm going to touch on it because it feeds into the second part, which is really what they're trying to do. What the... Um, what the thinking was behind this camera. And then thirdly, I'll talk about the files themselves. Um, again, slightly different files, slightly different sensor, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so three sections. Um, so let's just kick off, you know, it's a digital camera. We've got the new introduction of the toggle here, which I think is genius. I'll come on to that. In a, you know, a bit later, um, we have got the sort of larger, higher resolution screen, Gorilla Glass, very tough. I didn't use it because I don't chimp, um, and I save myself a ton of battery. We've got a more simplified menu, which is you know it's a sort of three button rather than I think there were six on the M two forty. It's a much more logical menu, a lot more user-friendly, a lot more logical <laughs> uh, menu. Um, and, you know, I've heard it said many times, much, much improved. Um, we have obviously got the thinner, the thinner body. They've taken the video off the M240, which was, you know, really gave that camera quite a bit of heft um, and we don't have the supersonic batteries of the M240 but you know to, to be able to thin it down they've had to go with a smaller battery so not as not as um, not as powerful because it's not as large but you can argue well if you're not using the the video capacity of the m240 are you going to make notice that much difference probably not and if there is any it's very very marginal um but overall you know i'd happily sacrifice i don't know 10 percent battery for a thinner body any day and the loss of a video that nobody's going to use whatsoever um and I mean, I don't know about you, but I have two extra batteries. It's, it's a box ticking exercise for me. I'm not gonna leave home without them, basically. I know I'm covered. I don't have an anxiety about whether or not I've got enough juice. I've got enough juice, end of story, job done, box ticked. You know, that's what half the battle is. Tick as many boxes as you can. Yeah, it's extra expense. I get, I get that, and um, hey, but really, you know, <laughs> you get caught out. I've look, I've never used the third battery, ever. <laughs> I've not finished a second battery. I have needed a second battery on occasion, but generally, I get by with one. Generally, one is absolutely fine for most of the day. But I just, you know, err on the side of caution. Tick those boxes. Better to have more juice than less juice. That's just common sense. Um, what else? What else? As I say, this doesn't have the touch screen. That's for the late. It's not a later edition. I mean, it's. Look, I don't want 40 megapixels on my camera. You know, I just don't. People might. I don't. I want. I want to be able to use this. I don't want to be filling up my hard drives left, right, and center with massive files. Um, what I want is beautiful files and workable files. And this is absolutely, you know, to be honest, the M9 had, yeah, that was, I think that was 16 megapixels, 16. But, you know, that was, that was plenty enough. 24 is easily, you know, that's just that's yeah that's that's my opinion um what else the sound on this is just amazing coming from the m9 it's just a beautiful the m240 had a nice pleasant sounding one as well but this is just this is the best it's 
it's so such a lovely, exact, reassuring, really, really nice. It shoots about three. No, what am I talking about? I think it's five or six frames a second. Um, I think obviously depending on maybe whether you shoot in JPEG or DNG, but I think yeah, it's it's there thereabouts. Um, the buffer, the elephant in the room, I nearly forgot it, because you don't notice it. <laughs> the buffer on this is sorted. From the M9, you know, you'd shoot, 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 and then it would just, it would just, you know, bottleneck, and you'd have to wait and maybe take the battery out, and, ah, it, you know, the M9's a great camera, don't get me wrong, people love that camera. Um, I think Alex Webb uses that camera, um, and for very good reason. It has limitations, but it's still a beautiful camera. The sensor in that thing is is unbelievable. People swear by it. I swear by it. it you know, it is. It was a beautiful sensor. I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, but look, you don't want. You don't. For me, when I'm out, I don't want to be waiting. You know, this buff. It's just. It's non-existent. I've shot, I've had this camera for two years. So I had the M9, and the first thing I noticed about it was, you know, the shutter sound, didn't like it, clunky, whirly. And then it started clocking up. Um, well, you know, <laughs> it wasn't a problem most of the time, because you just wait a few seconds. But, you know, that's the last thing you really want. With this, I've had this for two years, and I've never, ever once had a clocking up issue. Not once. It's the pro you know the process in this is is dynamite. It's absolutely brilliant to the point where you don't notice it. I, you know, I nearly forgot to mention it, and that is that's a massive, massive thing for me. Um, so I, you know, I may have missed a couple of things. You know, it's a quarter turn on the plate as opposed to a. It's kind of weird. It's it's like a yeah a quarter turn rather than a than a sort of full 180 turn. Uh, not sure what that's about, but I just remembered it, so I thought I'd flag it up. Um, let's just turn that off. Quarter turn, off it comes. Battery, card, all neatly housed. So yeah, it's just, yeah, a bit quicker, marginally, but hey. Um, and, oh, the viewfinder. The viewfinder is beautiful. Very, very large. Very, very clear. That's a, that's a, an improvement as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, really, really gorgeous viewfinder. Um, with a 50mm lens, you know, the lines are slightly more towards the edge. Which is, you know, which is fine by me. Um, which means the 35mm are kind of right at the edge. Um, but that is a much, yeah, that's a really, really nice viewfinder. So let's, let's leave that there because if you want technical specs, you can visit the Leica website, let's face it, get all the way down there. Um, so what are they doing? What are they doing with this camera? I've said in previous vlogs that Leica have been guilty of thinking thinking that they should play catch up with the competition looking over their shoulders and thinking hey hey they put a video camera on all this kind of stuff and for me it seems as though somebody at Leica has said no hold your horses hold your horses let's forget this catch up absurdity let's Let's think about what a Leica user wants, what is important on a camera to a Leica user, faster buffer, the much cleaner, brighter, larger viewfinder. Let's put things on. Let's, let's, let's start with a blank piece of paper. We have a great product, 
But what can we do? How are we going to go with this? I mean, what I believe like we're doing with this camera is that they are they're paring down, they're getting rid of the, the gimmicks, the video camera. I mean, what they were thinking about with that, I do not know in the first place. But they're basically saying, or basically thinking, let them plumb in what they want. Give them the menu, a really, really good menu. Let's you know, make the screen really, really good. Absolutely bang on. Let's simplify it. Let's let them plumb in everything they need. Their metering, what, however they like their camera to work. And then, it's almost as though they're saying, then switch it off. I mean, not literally maybe, but, you know, I, I do, as I said, I, I, I don't chimp. But it's almost as though they're saying, get it in there. And if you switch it off, you can now, you now have a camera that does everything that a film camera does. It makes it, it makes it one and the same. So everything you need to take a great photograph, a, you know, when I say great photograph, I'm talking about a technically really good image is external on the camera now. It's at your fingertips. As I say, you, you, you can plumb in whatever you like into the menu system, but then you can literally switch it off. Now you have a camera, you have your aperture, so you're deciding your depth of field, you have your, you know, your, your shutter speed, um, and and you're good to go. I mean, when I set out, when I go out through the door, I look at the light, I, I assess where I'm going, what the light is, um, and I toggle ISO up and set it to where I want it to be. Boom. I can change that at a given, you know, I don't have to go into menus anymore. You know, in previous, models previous years digital cameras just had this step there was nothing here it was almost as though it was just a blank space that had, hadn't quite figured out what to do with it it was just you know it was just this step no toggle just it was like a blank side of the camera and you know this is like a design that goes back to the mp it's it, it mirrors the rewind crank and it's just a brilliant, brilliant idea. You know, I think somebody at Leica has won the Design of the Year award with this. I really do. It's just very, very clean, very exact. You know, people. I've heard people say they have problems lifting it up. I, you know, not at all. It's not flimsy, but it's, it comes up and this. You know, it's not difficult at all. I. You know, mine hasn't loosened. But it's has never been difficult to to lift in the first place. Not sure what they're talking about there, but I think the design of this is absolutely brilliant. You know, I've said it before. It's a, the body is a box with a hole in it, and you put the best piece of glass on you can afford, in my opinion. And that's what it is: your aperture, your shutter speed, and your focus. That's all you're dealing with. And so. And so with previous models, it's almost as though they've kind of been around the roundabout and they've been guilty of, you know, thinking, oh, maybe we have to catch up with a competition or no, 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 go your own way. This is, this is the best, you know, let's, let's face it, you know, they're, they're, you can use this camera for all sorts of things, but its DNA is in street reportage photography. So we have the best product, but let's just think about it. Let's calm down. Let's, you know, think about what we do, what we're legendary for, what our DNA is, and then, you know, not just improve, but let's dumb down, let's get rid of gimmicks, improve, improve brilliantly, and do it with the, the user in mind. What do they need? What do they want? Everything, you know, this is now the first, I believe, 
the first digital M that is a proper M camera. Let me let me go a step further. <laughs> so roll the drums. I'm going to stick my neck out and say, you know, this digital model, this digital camera has arrived. This is the first Leica digital M camera that is destined to be a classic. It's the first one because they've got everything right with it. It is now, it deserves that label. It's an M camera. It's, it's, it works. They've, they've nailed it with this. You know, just in yesteryear with the analog film cameras, you know, you've got to say that the M3 is an absolute legendary camera. It is. You know, it was phenomenal for the time. It's phenomenal now. Um, I think the M6 probably deserves that tag. I think the M7 actually is a phenomenal camera as well. It's a sort of less talked about camera, but the M7 is a it's an amazing camera. And I think the MP is just the best of, you know, the best of all their analog cameras put together. They're, yeah. This is the first digital classic that Leica have made. The others were, you know, there's some very good things about them. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't think they'll go down in history. I think this one will. I think this is the the first M digital classic. You've heard it here first. And I, I, I'm absolutely certain of it. Because, because of what they've done, what they've... Somebody at Leica has said, let's just calm down. Let's think about this. Let's get it right. This is... This is an M camera. Let's let's retain our philosophy. The, the Leica user wants to be able to have the controls at their fingertip. They don't want they don't want auto zoom. They don't want the camera dictating to them what the camera does. They want that aperture. They want the shutter speed, and they want to focus. Boom, which is exactly what a film camera does. So it not only behaves like a digital, uh, like a film M camera, it feels like one as well. Feels, you know, exactly the same, exactly the same width. It's a sort of seamless thing now. You just don't have to put film in this. It's a, it's, it's, it's making it one and the same. It's just a slightly different. It's just a, you know, slightly different medium. Well, it's a very different medium digital and film but it feels the same it sounds the same it behaves in the same way you have you know yes plumb in here when you first get it charge the batteries plumb in your likes and dislikes and then you can almost just switch it off i do switch it off and boom you know the only thing you've got to remember is exposure you know if you this camera, this camera will very easily obtain you very precise, you know, the metering here is, is excellent. It's really, really good. You know, but as with film, you always, you know, the difference between film and digital is that you would ostensibly expose, you know, you'd overexpose film slightly expose more for the shadows and here you've got to expose the highlights that's the only difference it's the only thing you've got to be slightly mindful of because because those are the characteristics of film not because of anything like it have done those are just you know that's that's what you do with film um it's got a phenomenal range uh, you know if you if you mess up you, you can still pull film back brilliantly with digital you've just got to be slightly mindful that you don't blow the highlights which it's not easy to do but it can be done and then you can't you know then it's 
you know, if you play your highlights, it ain't good. It, it's not. So you just slightly underexpose. That's, that's all you have to do. Um, you can pull three stops of shadows back in this quite easily. It's astonishing what you can pull out if you underexpose. Um, or you just don't oh you just don't blow just don't blow the highlights. That's all I'm going to say. How you do that is up to you. Um, and that you know that's I believe what Leica have very very successfully done with that. Having shot with it for the last couple of years, it's it's brilliant. You know if you like rangefinder cameras, if you shoot street. Or, or other things but you know my vlogs are all about street photography so that's my context that's my you know um that's my premise here so it, you know it, it's just a superb camera it's it, it i can't think of anything i'd rather have on this that i wish like i'd put on and i can't think of anything i, I wish they'd taken off it works like a film camera like a film m camera of yesteryear um, or of today, you know, they still make one of the few companies, maybe the only company I don't know that still make film cameras. Pretty special, eh? That's pretty amazing. Um, we, yeah, you know, just didn't mention before, but um, we got to four thousandth of a second, um, eight seconds to four thousandth of a second. Anyway, I'm not going to go on to technical aspects again so i met uh, i mentioned i would talk about files um with this camera and i would say they've got that right as well right from the off so i didn't have the 240 the m240 i leaped from the m240 um had the m9 and I would say those files are very, very close to the M9. They're not the same though. They're slightly different. If you want, if you love M9 files, I would say, you know, if I'm going to describe these files in one word, I would say flat. Flat doesn't sound so good, does it? But I don't mean flat, flat. They're just flatter than, and, and flat is actually a really, really good word because it means that as with their lenses, as I've described before, they're not as contrasty. So what Leica are doing with these files, with this sensor, I believe, is they're saying, we'll give you flat files. We not, we're not going to insult your intelligence. We're not going to try and smack you around the chops and go, you know, here's a really punchy, saturated file straight out of the camera. No, we know that you know. We know that you don't need to be titillated. You don't need to be, you know, we know that you know that having a flatter file is far better. So that as soon as you go into Lightroom, you have all the control. Like I've said before, far better if you like contrast to up the scale and take information out, the mid-tones out, than start off with a contrasty file that's trying to, you know, slap you around the chops right from the off, far better to have a flat file and up the contrast than, than a file that's already contrasty because you can't dial back in what wasn't there in the first place. You know, that's... So they've got it absolutely bang on. That you just need, you know, to get M9 files, I find... I just have to, I don't just up, you know, saturation. No, I I pick out, it's normally green, I find. I just pick out the green and up the hue on it ever so slightly. I'm not talking about much. They're very clean. They're very neutral colors. They're not as warm as the M240, which I found was a bit, um magentary but don't quote me on that because i never had the m240 but the files that i saw and i did see quite a few files i felt you know they were a little bit warm 
which yeah, a lot of people like, but I don't think warm's great for skin tones. Not not magenta anyway. Um, and if you you know, I, I think they're much closer to the M9 files, but with a a bit more information. So I think they stand great, really straight out of the camera. But if you just want a little bit more tweaking, you know, there are inline files that need a slight bit of tweaking, to, you know, and you do that according to how you like your files. But the important thing is those files you have all the choice with. You have all the choice in the world with, which is a great thing. As soon as the camera starts dictating to you, you're in trouble. As soon as the camera starts saying, yeah, we're going to make these files really punchy, we're going to put loads of saturation in, put loads of contrast in to try and make you go, wow. No, it doesn't work like that. It's, you know, a lot of manufacturers do it. But be careful because they're limiting your choice. They're limiting what you can do. If you decide later on that you don't like, you know, if you want... You know, maybe I'm going back old school a little bit, but with black and white photography, the thinking was, you know, an art, um, an, an art image was, was an image that contained all the information. So it wasn't contrasty at all. It had a certain aesthetic because it it was, you know, let's, let's not beat about the bush. F fairly flat looking, but it was almost sumptuous because it was flat looking. Because it had all the dynamic range, all the detail. Um, now, you know, we know that people, some people anyway, like contrasty, punchy files, gritty files that kind of you know a lot of people just think that it suits street more yeah maybe it does maybe it doesn't it's a it's an aesthetic so therefore it's you know in the eye of the beholder it's a subjective thing but as i've spoken about previously with german lenses they're less contrasty which is a really 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 good thing it doesn't it doesn't you know, it might not slap you around the chops straight out of the camera, um, but that's a good thing too. It's, it gives you, you know, the bottom line is it's giving you more choice. You decide how much contrast or how little contrast you want to put add to your file. You decide how much saturation or or whatever else you want. The files give you that choice. And that's the right way around. You don't want the camera dictating. You don't want the camera deciding that you're going to have contrasty saturated files. In my opinion, I mean, that's, it's not just my opinion. That is, you know, that is how photography works. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of it. It's, it's, um, you know, overall, it's a, well, not overall. That sounds like I'm, you know, not talking about some things or rounding things up. It is just an astonishing camera. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a first Leica M digital classic. <laughs> no, good night to leave on, <laughs> to, uh, to end on. Um, you know, decide yourself. Um, borrow one, rent one, or whatever. I don't know, but that's that's the. I think that's the. Um, that's what Leica are trying to achieve, and I think that is what this camera is all about. Trying to merge analog film cameras with digital and making them one and the same, getting back to that M ethos, that M spirit, M philosophy, three things at your fingertips, aperture, shutter speed, focus, simple. 
everything that you need technically to take a great photograph. And I think the files, so I, you know, always say that photography is, you know, half technique and half seeing, half composition and light. Those two things, you've got to technically know what you're doing and you need an eye, you need to be able to compose an image and you do that in various ways. But the technical aspect of this camera is brilliant. You plumb the stuff in, you have your three things at your fingertips, the three things you need technically to take a great photograph, and then the files are just sublime. They're not as titillating as the M9, but they give you more choice than the M9. They, they allow you to make M9 files very, very quickly in an instant. Um, no messing, no hassle. Just a quick, te quick tweak and you're there. Um, very intelligent, very well thought out. Um, and this camera is, you know, like all good M classic cameras should be, this ends your lust. This is, you know, I can't, you know, I'm sorry, like, <laughs> but I can't see myself buying another digital camera. This hits the mark. Can't think of a single thing this camera, you know, I wish this camera did. You know, after five minutes shooting the M9, I realized <laughs> there were some shortcomings on it. Very great, you know, very lovely camera in all sorts of ways. Um, a brilliant camera in all sorts of ways, but it had some shortcomings. This, no shortcomings, not one. This, bang on, every single time, in every way. You know, great buffer, great processor, you know, just a superb engine, beautiful, beautiful files, pin sharp, um, and a, I can't even, even mention it today, the ISO, you know, I mean, 50,000, you know, I would say, you know, not great at 50, but astonishingly good considering you normally have to come down a couple of stops 25 you know i'm not going to use i'm not going to write home about 25 either but then you can use them you can use them they're not a disgrace they're not they're not you know but 12 and a half is fine absolutely fine you can't i can't believe it 12 and a half 12 and a half absolutely sumptuous 64 is almost my preferred shooting if i can you know um in lower light or you know stick a filter on if it's if it's bright i really love the characteristic it really looks like film um yeah i mean there's just nothing to dislike about this camera it's it practically sees in the dark <laughs> probably sees better than the human eye can see you know and that's what we love, you know, that's what we love about street. We love being able to shoot at low light. We love being able to shoot on the on the move. We love small, compact, doesn't upset anybody, tiny little lenses. Um, and you can say, yeah, well, I don't do it much compared to a DSLR. They do everything you need. And you try carrying a DSLR around with you all day, you know. People go, oh, but they're much better in the hand. No, you need all that ergonomic rubber stuff because they're so big and so heavy and you need a good grip on them. You don't need a great grip on these. These just fit in the hand. But more than that, I promise you, the size of those lenses, the size of the body, see how long you can carry one of those around for. I can carry this around all day long with me and not upset anybody. You try carrying a big DSLR. <laughs> Um, not gonna. <laughs> well, you just you know, you do it. You be the judge. Um, so that's it. Waffled on for long enough. Um, thank you again for stopping by, and thank you for all the likes, um, and thank you for the comments. Um, really, you know, wonderful. Um, thanks for that. Cheers. See you for the next one.